And we are going to start the first session. In the first session, we're going to start with Lian Nguyen, who is going to talk about fixed time gradient dynamics with time varying coefficients for continuous time optimization. Please, Lian. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, maybe good morning to someone. <laughs> yeah. I would like to uh, thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk about my recent work. Uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, my topic today is on uh, fixed time gradient dynamics with time varying coefficients for continuous time optimization. And it is based on Zhang Guo with uh, Andrew Eberhard and Singhu Zhu from IMIT University and Chao Zili from uh, UNSW. Uh, continuous time optimization is uh, currently an uh, active field of research in optimization theory. and. Uh, Real work in this area has provided useful insights and elegant methods for proving stability and convergence property of the continuous time optimization algorithm. So that's why we pay attention about uh, continuous time optimization. I have uh, divided the talk into three parts. The first part uh, introduced Lyapunov stability conditions for fixed time stability of time varying dynamical system. These conditions are then applied to continuous time optimization problems. And the last part is uh, numerical examples. Uh, we will show uh, the, uh, the performance of uh, our algorithms. So let's start with uh, Lyapunov stability conditions. Throughout this talk, uh, we assume that F is continuously differentiable and we consider the optimization problem of minimizing Fx over Rn. So we all know that uh, one of the most popular al algorithms to solve this problem is gradient descent and the continuous uh, version of gradient descent is gradient flows. Uh, however, one major drawback of the gradient descent algorithm is that it converts slowly and uh, can easily be trapped into a local optimal. So that's why there has been a lot of research on the theory and practice of accelerated first order scheme. Um, however, most of them focus on asymptotic of the solution to the optimal point. But uh, can we, can the solution um, converse in finite time to the optimal point or converse into to the optimal point in fixed time. So using dynamics with finite time conversions and fixed time conversions has received an increasing interest due to the ability to ramp up the conversion speed and found many applications in uh, fast control and optimization. Uh, in um, 2006, Kotel uh, proposed this algorithm where F is twice continuously differentiable and strongly convex. And he proved that uh, with this algorithm, XT converts to optimal points in finite time. To overcome the strong convexity, in uh, 2020, Romero and uh, Pinozman proposed the other algorithms. Uh, to get the finite time conversions too, and uh, they require F satisfy this condition where theta is between zero and uh, one over two minus B, where B here is between zero and one. In the same year, 2020, uh, Gart and uh, Banabu proposed two algorithms to get the fixed time conversions of xt to the optimal point. Here we see that p is between zero and one and q is negative and f satisfies this condition. So we know that this condition with exponent one half here and another algorithm is uh, Newton-like method and uh, they also get the fixed time conversions we see that here C1 and C2 are constant. So the question is that 
can we replace the constant parameter by the time varying parameters and then can we get still get the fixed time conversions and do the new algorithm converse faster another question is that uh, can we replace the exponent one half here and uh, in fact the answer is yes but how we can do that so first we will recall final time and fixed time stability theory now we consider this uh, dynamical system and the point x star is final time stable equilibrium if x star satisfy three conditions here we see that if x star is Lyapunov Lyab stable if the uh, the starting point x zero is close is enough for x star so the solution remain close enough x star for all t here and the solution xt converts to x star in finite time it means that the exit uh, capital t here such that xt equal x star for all t is bigger than capital t and here t capital t is depend on x0 and t0 if t capital t is only depend on t0 and is independent of x0 so we call xt convert to x star in fixed time and then x star is called a fixed time stable equilibrium this is uh, definitions so to get the final time and fixed time stability we still get the Lyapunov condition that's back to uh, 1986 the first work about final time control mechanisms was studied by Haimo, but uh, until 2000, a uh, rigorous foundation for final time stability uh, were provided by uh, Perhat and Bernstein in 2000. They uh, assume that V is positive definite with respect to X star. It means that V at X star equals zero and for all x different x star v is positive and the derivative of v with respect to t is less than or equal minus c times v to the power alpha where alpha is less than one then x star is a final time stable equilibrium and t is bounded by this term we see that this upper bound depends on x zero and uh, to get the fixed time stability in uh, 2012 Polyakov provided a bono condition for fixed time stability where he still assume that v is positive definite with respect to x star and v satisfy this condition where alpha is less than one and beta is bigger than one then X star is fixed time stable equilibrium. And the upper bound of T here is independent of X zero. So we combine the Lyapunov condition for final time stability and fixed time stability. For the fixed time stability, we have two terms here, V to the power alpha and V to the power of beta where alpha is less than one. And beta is bigger than one so two terms here dominate the term v when v is large and small respectively resulting into accelerated conversions for both small and large initial distance from equilibrium point why if the right hand side here only contains the first term so which dominates when v is small the time of conversion the finite but grows larger as the initial distance from the equilibrium increase now remember that uh, our interest is time varying coefficients so that's why we need to extend polyarchic results because here we only have the constant parameter here so the constant c1 and c2 will replace by time varying coefficients and then we still get the 
fixed time stable equilibrium of X star. By this theorem, we assume that V is positive definite with respect to X star and V satisfies this condition with H1 and H2 are positive functions uh, and satisfy two conditions here. So X star is fixed time stable equilibrium and we have the upper bound of T here. Uh, this condition for H1 and H2 are easily satisfied here. And how about the upper bound of T? Yeah, at uh, the first glance, we might think that the upper bound for fixed time is complicated. Nevertheless, it can be computed explicitly in several cases. For example, when uh, H1 and H2 are constant, our result covers the one of Polyakov. When H1 equals C1 over T and H2 equals C2 over T, we have the upper bound of T here. And we know that for this zero small, we have this upper bound is more than the upper bound obtained by Polyakov. So that's why we have the faster conversions. In the other cases, when H1 equals C1 to the uh, over T to the power of mu and H2 equals C2 to the over uh, T to the power of mu, we still have an explicit upper bound for fixed time T here. Now we um, use our conditions to construct dynamical system with time varying coefficients for continuous time optimization programs. Before going further, we uh, need assumptions for function F. We assume that F satisfy polyacolosia inequality here. And we know that in the literature to get the fixed time stability, they need theta here is equal one half. The condition where theta is equal one half was proposed by Polyak and Lozasevich in 1963. And um, we have some example for function F satisfy uh, this inequality. When F is strongly convex, so this inequality are full, is fulfilled. If F x equals g of ax for any strongly convex function g and any matrix a so fx satisfy pl inequality we know that uh, if g is strongly convex and a uh, full row rank so f is strongly convex so f is satisfy uh, pl inequality but if a is not full row rank, we still have that F satisfy PL inequality here. Another example that Fx equal I square plus three times uh, uh, sin square of X here. Here, the function F is inverse function. It is not convex function, but still satisfy this in inequality. Now, returning to the problem of minimizing Fx over Rn, we propose two, uh, two algorithm gradient-based method and a Newton-like method. Uh, with gradient-based method, we call FGTC here. It, it means that fixed time gradient-based uh, method with time varying coefficients. And we propose this dynamical system where F satisfy PL inequality and H1, H2 satisfy two conditions here. So XT converts to a minimizer of F in fixed time. And T is bounded by this term. Moreover, if F has unique minimizer X star, then X star is fixed time stable. Um, another Another method is Newton-like method. Here we uh, assume that 
Hessian is invertible. And uh, in this theorem, we don't need uh, PL inequality. We still get the XD converts to a crit to a critical point of F in fixed time T. And T is bounded by this term. How about if the Hessian is not uh, invertible? We assume that F satisfies PL inequality here with theta equal one half, and F satisfies this condition. So XT still converts to a minimizer of F in fixed time with this dynamical system. And uh, moreover, F, if F has unique minimizers, I star, then I star is fixed time stable in equilibrium. Now, so next we will show some numerical example. Uh, now I want to ask you, do you like to drink wine? <laughs> uh, Louis Buster says that uh, wine is the most helpful and most hygienic of Beverages. Do you think uh, this code is right? Oh, yeah, it seems to be right because all over the world, why was so popular, and maybe only about five percent of population doesn't know what is why. Yes, I will. And um, what if you think about the quality of why? How can we differentiate the why according to the to the quality, uh, according to uh, iceberg, the wine is differentiated according to its smell, its flavor, and color. And maybe uh, you are mathematics expert and also wine expert, but I am not. <laughs> Sorry, but nevertheless, if you give me some information about the wine you have, I can tell you the quality of the wine. But how can I know? Yeah, so we still use optimization to predict red white quality here. Now we have uh, the data set uh, with uh, 1,599 observations with uh, 12 features here. And um, the first of 11 features uh, is used to classify the quality of red wine here. And we will split the, training, uh, the data set to training sets and uh, testing sets. The training sets will use 80% of uh, data sets and 20% uh, for uh, testing sets. And we want to uh, find the W here such that um, I think is uh, uh, the training set. I uh, training time W is uh, approximated to uh, the quality here. I uh, know that I, I did not a uh, Y train here, and it means that we uh, want to minimize this function, and we will use the algorithm fixed time gradient uh, with time varying and constant parameters to solve this, uh, to solve this problem. And uh, in the finger, compare the performance of methods using constant parameter FZCC with the ones using time varying parameter FZTC. And FZCC, is illustrated by a red line and uh, FGTC is illustrated by green line. And it can be seen that uh, FGTC converts faster than the other. And after obtaining the minimizer W, we will use this for testing set. Here we use a root mean square arrow to measure accuracy. It is considered an excellent general purpose error metric for numerical predictic, uh, predictions. We see that RMSE obtained by using FCTC is less than RMSE 
obtaining by using FCCC or using a Python toolbox linear regression. So that's why our algorithm has better performance here. Another example is a logistic regression, uh, which is popular problem in machine learning. We uh, here we choose 400 randomly data points. And in this finger, the green line shows the performance of the method with constant parameter FZCC, while the red line and the black line show the performance of the method using time varying parameters. It can also observe that the time of convergence of FZDC1 and FZDC2 are smaller than uh, the methods using constant parameter uh, from any initial point. Yeah, in conclusion, we have extended the Lyapunov stability condition for fixed time stability to time varying dynamical system. We have derived fixed time gradient dynamics with time varying coefficients for optimization problems. And our results extend and improve the ones in the literature. Uh, in uh, another preprint, we use weak cognition for function F, and we propose fixed time gradient dynamics for composite problems. I uh, list here some key reference. And um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Lian, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Do we have any questions? Yes, Regina. Uh, okay, so first of all, Lian, congratulations. It was a beautiful talk. Thank you. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you if in the numerical experiments you use the uh, gradient version, you didn't use the Newton version? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, I have another um, numerical to use a Newton method. Why I don't use Newton method here? Because um, um, the data set is very big and it's cost mm -hmm. expensive. And that's why I don't use a Newton like method here. Uh, I have another example uh, to use Newton-like method. Yeah, you can see if uh, the matrix A is smaller <laughs> size, so we can use a Newton-like method here and it still converts faster. I see. And can you um, suppose that instead of using the inverse of the Hessian, you replace it by another matrix, let's say, which ideally approximates the Hessian. Would you get similar results? Uh, sorry, I, 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 I don't get you. Suppose that in, in, in your method, in your dynamical system, yeah. instead of using the inverse of the Hessian. Of the Hessian? Of F, uh. like. In the, yeah. in the Newton version, instead of using the Hessian, you use a matrix that uh, approximates the Hessian. Oh, sorry, not yet. I have not yet tried this one. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I can comment on that, uh, being yeah. the supervisor, and so therefore can step in. Uh, basically, what we're using is we're using uh, you know differential equations here, and so there is an issue when it comes to sort of maybe trying to. Um, uh, do the things you do in discrete, you know, uh, type algorithms where you can do quasi Newton updates and rank one or rank two updates. Uh, it's not quite clear how, what you do when you're dealing with a dynamical system in that case, you know. And it's a very interesting question. I, I certainly think it's a great research question to uh, to mm -hmm. ask that question. But but I, I don't. Uh, we don't really have a any feeling. And and if you got some ideas, we're all ears about what one might try and do. Um, when you're going over into a continuous system. In fact, in fact, there's a kind of a, a, a real issue here between in this field where it comes bridging the gap, you know, between what people do in discretization and what you do in the continuous time. And what, what they mean to each other is, is not entirely clear, you know? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Andrew.
Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> uh, Yachin? Um, hello, Lian. It, yeah, hi, it was Yachin. a very interesting yeah, talk. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so you, you are solving a differential equation yeah. to get to the an equilibrium yeah. of that differential equation in finite time. Yes. Capital T. And uh, you're, you're presenting bounds on that. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't help but, but think when I see a differential equation and you have an aim to achieve, um, perhaps, uh, I mean, would it be interesting to uh, formulate it as an optimal control problem where yeah. H1 and H2 mm -hmm. might play the role of two controls? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that and, uh, dynamical system is very... Uh, useful in uh, optimal control, yeah, but I have not yet tried. <laughs> so what are the conditions yeah. on H1 and H2? Mm -hmm. What are the conditions that you uh, have on H1 and H2? And H2? Yeah. Um, For mm -hmm. convergence in finite time. Yeah. Uh, uh, for the first time. Yeah, that is our Condition yes. H1 and H2. Yeah. I see. Yeah, and uh, we see that if H1 and H2 are constant, so <coughs> these mm -hmm. conditions are satisfied. Okay. Well, um, these are interesting. Maybe that that can they can be converted in some way mm -hmm. into something to fit into an optimal control problem, mm -hmm. but even Ignoring these conditions, if you take H1 and H2 to be your controls, so what problem have we got? You, you start at X0, your initial guess, mm -hmm. and you want to get to the equilibrium uh, in um, finite time. And that time, I'm wondering if it can be formulated as to minimize that terminal time at which you are converging. Maybe place bounds on H1 and H2. I, I'm just uh, uh, speculating, right? Yeah. So yeah, thank because, you. Because uh, it has this structure that yeah. I feel that it might be interesting to look at it as an optimal control problem mm -hmm. where H1 and H2 are the control variables. Yeah. You're, uh, your, um, yeah, thank you for your interesting idea. Maybe in the well, future, in maybe the, we can uh, do something together. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, so, uh, again, thank you for your interesting talk. Yeah, yeah thank you, Yasin. Very good suggestion, Yasin. Yeah. yeah, hi, Alex. Hello, Lynn. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I didn't know that you are an expert in wine quality. <laughs> now I know whom to ask if I need assistance. Yes, <laughs> but I think that you need some uh, information about the chemical <laughs> oh. for me. I'm not really <laughs> interested in the ingredients, just the final <laughs> product. Yeah. Uh, Lynn, uh, a short and very naive question. You referred at some point to uh, Loeshevich and um, uh, Pollock, yeah. 1963. I, I'm just curious, uh, is it their joint work or it is just a coincidence? Ah, no, they it's published something. They, 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 both, they yeah. published something the same year. Yeah, 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 the same year. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah. Because uh, I, I have a feeling that they've never met. That's why I'm asking <laughs> yeah. this question. Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any other question? Um, while people are thinking whether they have questions, I might have ask a quick one, Lian, is about your numerical experiments. Because you prove uh, finite convergence of your algorithms, yeah. uh, did you try to let your experiments run long enough that they terminate? Uh, you mean long enough? When... So that you reach this finite time? Yes. So uh, did you? I, you mean that until they get the optimal yes. point? Uh, yes. 
I think because there's some uh, in the numerical we have asked we have um, uh, approximate something I think in the computer so that's why with the numerical we can get the you don't actually get yeah, it. Yeah, we have already yeah. the theory about that. I see. Yeah. Okay, if no other question, then uh, let's all thank Lien for her great presentation. Yeah. And now you, she can she can relax and uh, yeah. because she knows, <laughs> because she knows okay, what, thank you. about wine, she can even relax with a glass of wine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you.